Hey, badass black girls, and they making big moves. Hey, badass black girls, nothing that you can't do. They are the future, I'm trying to tell you. They want the best, no time to settle. They got the strength to handle the pressure. These are the queens, nobody better. Yeah, yeah, changing the narrative, that is imperative. They about to rock this. Tell the women that you got this. Got no time for people who are toxic. It's all love, good vibes. Uh, you know I got your back, girl. Talking issues that matter. This is badass black girl, yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Badass Black Girl. Today we have another very special guest. Her name is Ella Churen, and I'm so excited to have her here. Hi! Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm so excited that, that you're here. Um, I was thinking about your journey and the different facets of your of your life, of you, who you are, and I can't wait to learn a little bit more. But for those who don't know you at all, would you introduce yourself? Sure. So my name is Ella Turen. I'm an, a multi-hyphenate artist, I like to say. Um, also a doctoral student. I study film and television. And I'm also an activist. I like to, um, you know, be engaged in social justice work however I can. And I like to think of myself as a champion for freedom, justice, and expression. So that's who I am and what I do. This is so beautiful. Thank you again for being here. And because I know you first as a writer, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about that first. So tell us a little bit about how you became Ella the writer. Uh, wow, I mean, Ella the writer kind of evolved first, um, I would say as a poet. Um, I started writing poetry when I was really little, but it was just like for fun, you know, like I would write poems to my dad or like on special occasions or things like that. And then, um, and actually I, I also, um, at 15, I used to read a lot because, you know, having Haitian parents, my parents were very strict. So I wasn't hanging out with people all the time. So instead I was reading a lot of books. Um, and I used to read like Stephen King books. I was obsessed with anything that Stephen King wrote. And I used to read um, like Sweet Valley High novels. And one day it occurred to me, I was like, I could write something like this. So I decided to write like a whole novel, like a teen romance novel. Um, so that was like the beginning of my writing journey, but I was just doing it for fun. I don't think I was thinking of it in that way. Um, and then later on, I really got into poetry and not only writing, but performing poetry. Um, and I did that for a long time. And, and what, what really drew it to me is, is that I, we were, I was part of a group that was using our art and our words as a tool to foster social justice and social change. So that was kind of where I got more deeply into it and started thinking of it more as an art form. And then um, because I was an actress and I, I was sort of like impatient to get um, more roles, that's how I got into screenwriting and playwriting um, and even writing like more fiction um, because I really wanted to create more content for myself. It was more of a selfish reason. So, and in that way, I was also giving other people an opportunity. So those are kind of like all the places where my my writing kind of evolved yeah i have so many questions now about <laughs> um your filmmaking career so i know that you're an actress and you also write scripts and uh, you're a filmmaker so how does one inform the other how do you feel that being a filmmaker made you a better actress and how does being an actress make you a better um, filmmaker that's a great question. I think that when I started writing films, I was still writing it from an actor's perspective. Like I was thinking about, okay, what would it be to really say these lines? What it, you know, as an actor, you study character, um, you study the scene, right? You have to, the way that I was trained, you have to do these character bios and really think about the life of the character. Like, where are they coming from? What do they like? Who are they related to? So you have to think of the interior life of the character, even if it's not given to you. 
So you're always kind of like constructing who this whole person is besides what they're saying in the scene. And that helps you in how you portray the person, right? So I was always writing with all of these things in mind, which is the same thing that writers do. You know, writers think about the entire life of a character and that helps inform how they act towards certain people or how they feel towards certain things. Um, so one definitely informs the other. I know that, you know, there are many uh, programs like directorial programs for filmmakers that require them to take acting classes because you want to know what it is like to embody a character to ask those kinds of questions. So um, yeah, they definitely inform each other. I think it made me, you know, it forced me to use my actor mind to ask similar questions as I was writing for the character. Um, and I think, you know, it's very easy to just be like, oh, I'm just gonna write a scene, but the scene is always informed by like the context, you know, what, what's going on at the time? What period of time is it? What are the, again, what are the characters thinking? How do they relate to each other? Right. Like these are all the things that actually drive how the scene goes. Um, so it definitely helped me ensure that I was asking those questions. You mentioned um, important aspects of um, script writing, thinking about the time, thinking about the characters. Um, I'm, th I'm thinking place is also a very important concept. And I started thinking about your background, the fact that you're of Haitian descent, the fact that you have been in different places within the US as well. Um, tell me a little bit about how um, has your background informed the kind of writing that you do? I know that you are an activist. So of course, um, your female experience is also playing a big role. What about place? Yeah, um, I grew up in New York, in Queens. So I'm very, I think I'm very um, influenced by the energy and the pace of New York. Um, you know, New Yorkers are accused of being, you know, very direct and blunt um, all, all the time. And, um, and, and all, but, but more than that, I think, you know, what, what I take away as a New Yorker, because I don't live there anymore, I haven't lived there for 10 years, um, is the, this, this drive towards social justice as well. And that ties into, um, you know, growing up in a, in a Haitian community, um, growing up around Haitian culture and, and um, history is, I, don't, I didn't know the details of this till later in, in life until I got to college, but understanding that that was an important aspect of how we move in the world, that um, we're the first Black Republic uh, in the Western Hemisphere, I think, and, and having that having that being a component of always being engaged in community, whether I was doing community service from a young age, um, that was always a thrust is like trying to make the world a better place or doing something for the world or doing something to be in service of your community is something I grew up with. And I think that's both a product of um, being Haitian and growing up in New York. So that has influence anything that I do in in my creative work because I always I always have a tendency to create art that that is going to be asking questions or be illuminating a social topic or you know or thinking about um, how to, how to tackle a, a thorny issue like race or gender or something like that. So it's kind of like an automatic thing for me. And I think it, it does um, have to do with where I grew up and what and who was around me at that time as well. So for those who want to become activists in a meaningful way. So a lot of young people ask me um, how to get involved. Let's say that they discover that they are particularly talented in writing and they want to use their writing to change the world, but they don't know where to start. What would be your advice? My advice is always to look in your own community, in your own backyard to see what people are doing. 
And I think now it's easier than ever to do that because we have social media and people are posting things all over. But, um, you know, the way that I discovered that I could put the two together was by joining a, a local community group that was doing this kind of work. I mean, we were doing, we were talking about the prison system when it wasn't um, kind of like a sexy thing to do. And we were using our art, our poetry, our music um, to bring, bring to the public's attention the, the, the tragedy of this, of this issue and, the, and trying to get people to think about how to solve it. Um, so I would say like there's there are every community, every neighborhood has organizations that are doing work. And more and more, I think organizations are looking for ways to partner with artists to help get their message out, um, to help partner and do the, you know, work on their campaigns. So if if folks look around as to what's happening, or even if they just pick an issue, right? If say you're interested in immigration. Um, you can just Google immigration and the town that you live in, and you'll find the organizations that are doing that work. And those are the organizations that I would say to partner up with, right? Because A, they're in your backyard, B, they've been doing the work. So they're, they're usually looking for collaborations and ways to expand what they're doing. And we talked, of course, about writing and writing is the perfect tool for activism, um, particularly poetry. And um, you get to write beautiful poetry, but you also uh, do the kind of poetry that is meant to be performed. Uh, let's talk now a little bit about your visual um, work. So um, there's a Creole expression that goes bonjour con baile pa con separe, meaning <laughs> that uh, you're multi-talented and you're talented beyond um, the ordinary, right? So, um, you're um, creative in different fields. I'm really curious about your, your interaction with art. Tell us a little bit about your visual creativity. So that also started as at a young age. I used to, um, so I, I'm old. So people who are old like me may remember when you used to get in the mail, the, the like hand-drawn brochures from the department store. Um, so instead of using like photography models, they would actually draw, you know, illustrations of the models with the clothes. And I used to be fascinated by those, <laughs> you know, I would, I would take them and um, I would make catalogs of my own with, with like, well, because most of those catalogs were also featuring white people. So I would make catalogs with brown and black people. And um, that was kind of like the way that I started drawing. I was always interested in art and then took a couple of classes in, in, um, in a high school. Um, but, and, and then when I got to college, I, I was a studio art minor. And so I took almost every art class I could get my hands on, whether it was sculpture, ceramics, painting. Um, I, I just was like trying to soak it all in. And that's really where I learned the different techniques. And because again, of like how I grew up and, and, and my sort of like, um, growing curiosity about blackness and about being Haitian, about being a woman, like that was all I drew <laughs> or uh, all the content I made was about all those things. Cause at that, that's the time that I was really discovering all of those, you know, I was delving into all of those areas. Um, so it's always stayed with me. It's, I think, I think visual art has, has always been like my first love. That's where I, I was like really passionate about making things and drawing. Um, so it's, it's funny because in the past, I don't know, couple of decades, I've kind of, sh you know, not done as much visual art as I would have wanted to because I've done more performing um, and more stuff in theater and in film. So now I'm actually like trying to get back on that because I do miss it. I miss not only you know, what you make at the end, but it's the process that intrigues me. Like, I'm very interested in 
in sort of like the technical and scientific aspects of making art. I'm that nerdy that I'm just like, I want to know how it's made. Like I'm that person that goes to a museum and the first thing I do is like I go right up to the painting or the sculpture I want to look at it and see like how it was made the materials that it was that were used I want to know like the artist's process and then I can take a step back and be like okay like what are they trying to say <laughs> well one thing that always um boggles my mind when someone has so many talents is a little bit of time management and project management. How do you choose what you're going to dedicate time to? Um, you mentioned, for instance, for instance, wanting to do a little bit more art because you had to focus on your filmmaking for a while. On a daily basis, how do you choose? Um, so it varies. I think I you could think about it in two ways. One, sort of like on a larger level, a, a chunk of period of time where I'm going to focus on something. And then on a smaller level, like whatever moves me from day to day. So I do have a, I do go through periods where I choose to focus on certain genres or certain art, art um, mode, modes of art making. So like the, the past five or six years, I was really focused on theater. I had, you know, a one woman show that I put up and I would say like 2014, 2015 is when I became like seriously invested in getting that show up and it did take a lot of time. So I was kind of focused on just that for the past five or six years. And now I'm like, all right, I did that. I accomplished what I needed to accomplish. That was my focus. Now I'm going to shift to getting back to film. So I've committed, like now I've committed myself to moving back to film. And my goal is in the next couple of years to make, you know, a couple of shorts, maybe make a feature. Like that's going to be, film is going to be my thing. I'll still do theater here and there, but not my, my own, you know, like I'll, I'll, um, if I, if somebody casts me in something, I'll do that. With the artwork, um, yeah, I, I, um, also kind of have been thinking about what I want to make to, you know, and I've been experimenting with new forms. So I discovered a couple of years, I discovered foil art, which is like really intrigued me. And I, I went for like three months and that's all I did. I kind of binged on it. And um, now I, I recently discovered Procreate on my iPad. So I'm like learning how to use that and making all these digital images. Um, so that was kind of, that was feeding me for a while because it was getting me back into the practice of making things. And now I'm kind of thinking of, okay, if I want to get back into this, I need to think of a project. I need to have an idea of something that I want to say. So what do I want to say? What medium do I want to do it in? How do I want to involve other people? So these are kinds of the questions that I'm asking myself as a pathway to getting to a point where I can like create something that's a visual art piece. Um, until I kind of like formulate all that, I probably won't devote energy towards it. Um, but once I have all those answers and sometimes it just comes as methodology and other times it's like, I'll be driving and it'll pop into my head. And then I'm just like, I'm all in after that. This is so wonderful. Um... I I'm getting a lot of tips in terms of you know just having a living the creative life and I know that a lot of us um, creators we need as many pointers as we can and that leads me to my next question actually um, you've been doing all this for a while the writing um, the art what are some of the lessons that you've learned that if you could go back to your younger self, you would absolutely make sure that she, she knows those few things hmm. to avoid headaches? <laughs> avoid headaches. Um, well, I would say like one of the early lessons that I learned is, was about rejection. <laughs> and um, 
I'm glad that I learned that lesson early on because now I don't, I try not to censor myself. Um, and I try to, to me, like enjoying the process is very important because if I can enjoy the process of making something, I'm less attached to the outcome, you know, and I'm less attached to what other people think about the outcome too. And that could be, um, it, I think it can be really difficult for artists because like, you know, the reason why we make things is not just for self-satisfaction, but you want to put it out into the world. You, you kind of want to know what people think about it. Um, and that's important, but it's not the most important thing. So being detached in a, in a bit of a way from that allows you more freedom to actually say what you want to say, make what you want to make. Um, so I would definitely, you know, uh, remind myself that the, the joy in the process um, is important so that you're not as attached to the outcome. Um, and then I would say, um, I, I would say like the other thing that I'm still learning and working on is discipline. <laughs> And um, I think it's really important for artists to be to be disciplined. I am not that disciplined. <laughs> I wish I was more disciplined in terms of like, I know people who are like every day, they wake up, they have a writing practice, they write every day for an hour or half an hour. And in my mind, I want to be that person. But I'm more of the person that sort of like something comes to me and then I spend three hours writing. I just like need to get it out. That's more of the kind of person that I am. So I guess, you know, everybody has their style, but to like not shame ourselves what, for whatever style it may be, I think is also important. Those are very good tips. Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you again for stopping by and letting us know about your journey and sharing those tips with us. We hope that you will come back um, yeah. <laughs> as you continue on your path, uh, your successful path. Um, thank you, Ella, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much, MJ. It was a pleasure. And, you know, again, congrats on all that you're doing. Um, you're an inspiration to so many people as well. So please keep the space open so that we can all, you know, continue to do our work. Absolutely. Thank you. And we'll <laughs> see each other soon. Okay.